Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Baxter and I'm a developer advocate at IBM for Bluemix. In today's video and actually for the next uh, couple upcoming videos, we're going to be talking about the hybrid cloud. So what is a hybrid cloud? A hybrid cloud is a, uh, a cloud that mixes together resources that are in a public cloud and in a private cloud. So uh, I think we all know at this point that Bluemix is a public cloud offering, meaning that the applications that you deploy to Bluemix are uh, able to be accessed by anyone with an internet connection. Uh, applications that are deployed in a private cloud cannot be accessed by anyone on the, on the internet. You need to have uh, special network access into that private cloud in order to access these applications. However, uh, many people often come up with use cases that, um, that uh, need uh, their public cloud applications to access data from their private cloud applications. Um, and uh, it's a very popular use case, especially with uh, enterprise customers. Um, so since, you're, since Bluemix is a, is a public cloud offering, how, how do we do this? Well, your first instinct might be to set up some kind of VPN. So the, the machine that the application is running on has access to the network in the private cloud. Well, since Bluemix is a PaaS, it's just not possible to do that. Remember, you don't have access to the machine the application is running on. You don't have access to the network that it's using. You don't have access to the infrastructure that the application is using at all, so there's no way to set up a VPN. So instead, like most things in Bluemix, you actually have to use a service, or in our case, an add-on. So the way to achieve uh, a hybrid cloud with a Bluemix application is to use the cloud integration add-on. So let's take a look at that add-on. So from our Bluemix dashboard, we can uh, click the connect and add-on uh, link here on the side. This brings you to the list of all the add-ons that are in Bluemix, and the one at the bottom here is called cloud integration. So you want to select cloud integration. And this brings you to some details about the cloud integration service. And um, since I don't have any applications to use it with right now, well, right now we're going to use the, uh, the add-on unbound. And we'll click create. Once the add-on is uh, created, uh, you can begin uh, setting up your, your hybrid cloud connections. So for the demo here, I'm going to actually uh, show you how you can expose some REST APIs from a server behind a firewall um, that, uh, uh, that we're going to use in a Bluemix application. Uh, and we're going to split this, this demo up into several pieces because there's a number of different steps uh, that you need to uh, complete before you actually get to the end goal of, of uh, using your, your, um, your REST APIs from your Bluemix application. So first I'd like to show you the REST API. So a very simple REST API that is returning um, some to-dos uh, in uh, JSON format. So if I execute this REST API and we go to the response body here, we see there's just a very simple array of JSON objects that have, you know, title and order and whether they're completed or not and then an ID. This is a pretty standard, pretty simple REST API. However, this server, etc203.austin.ibm.com, is not accessible uh, from the public internet. So if I go to this website here which tells you whether a server is up or not, right, we can use this same uh, uh, service to tell us whether you can actually reach the server or not. And I enter this domain name for my application, you can see that if I go to this domain name in my browser, that it brings up a default page. Um, but if I enter the same URL here in this uh, service and click check, it's going to tell me that it can't reach the server, so it thinks it's down, right? Because it is actually not accessible to the public internet. It's only accessible to the network that I'm on right now. So I want to expose. Uh, this API uh, and a number of other APIs to an application that is running uh, uh, in Bluemix in the public cloud that right now does not have access to this server. Um, so to begin doing that, uh, we're going to go back to our cloud integration service and we are going to begin by clicking create integration. So when we're talking about uh, uh, creating a cloud integration for REST APIs, we're going to use uh, IBM's Cast Iron Live service to do that. And this is kind of a, a part of uh, the cloud integration service. So if you don't have a Cast Iron Live account right now, you can click on sign up and you can sign up one for 
for free for 30 days at no charge uh, and to test it out and you can uh, this sign up process is pretty simple I've already signed up and have a username and password so I'm going to go ahead and log in uh, to the cast iron live service now with my username and password and I'm using the evaluation version so I'm going to check off evaluation and click sign in. Now this is going to bring me to uh, the cast iron live uh, page to start beginning configuring my uh, my integration uh, but for this part of the integration it's actually easier to do this on the machine that uh, that is uh, uh, serving up the REST APIs. So uh, if it's possible to, to open a browser on that machine, it's it's best to do it there. So I'm going to jump over to my uh, VNC client here where I am VNC'd into the server that is hosting my REST APIs and I'm going to uh, log into that uh, server and I'm going to go to the, the Cast Iron Live page on this server and actually do this part of the setup uh, on the server itself. I'll log in again with my username and password. Now the first thing, the first step uh, in, in setting up your cloud integration for uh, a, a REST API that's behind the firewall is to uh, click on an environment. So an environment is something either a development environment, you can have a test environment, a production environment. Uh, in my account I only have a development environment so I'm just going to use that environment here. Uh, and um, once you click on the development tab, click on uh, system. And you want to click on secure connectors if that's not already selected. And this is where you begin by setting up a secure connector. So the way um, uh, this cloud integration service works uh, is, is by creating a, a uh, or installing a, a secure connector on the machine that is running the application with the REST APIs you want to uh, expose. And this secure connector establishes a tunnel to the Cast Iron Live service. So instead of the Cast Iron Live service trying to connect uh, to your application server, the application server from behind the firewall will connect to the Cast Iron Live service. Uh, since there's no way to talk uh, to the application server, we want to talk from the application server to the Cast Iron Live service in the public cloud. And once it establishes that tunnel, uh, the cast iron you can use the cast iron live service to communicate with your application server that's behind the firewall. So the first step in doing any cloud integration is to install the secure connector. So I'm going to create a new secure connector here, and we're just going to give it a name. So we're going to call it To Do APIs, and we'll give it a description. And it says and we'll just say Let's us do CRUD operations. Um, Okay, and then we'll click save. And once that's created, you can uh, click on it. And uh, the first thing you need to do is download the secure connector configuration. So we're going to download that. Click download now. And click save. And then we need to download the installer. Uh, so the installer can be installed. You can either install it on Windows machines or Linux machines. I'm on a, a Red Hat machine here, 64-bit Red Hat machine, so I'm going to download the 64-bit Linux installer. And this is actually a, a shell script that you run, so um, I'm just going to copy this URL here, and actually I'm going to get this uh, uh, installer from uh, using wget. So I'm just going to run wget, and then paste in the URL here to download the installer for me. Okay, our installer is finished downloading, uh, but before we can run it, we need to just change the permissions on it so we can execute it. And so let's just do that. And I suggest that you don't change it to <laughs> make the position the permissions so wide open. But for demo purposes, I think it's okay for me to do that. And then we're just going to run the uh, installer. Uh, and you want to make sure if this is the first time you're installing to make sure that you select the install option and not the upgrade option, and accept the license agreement. And then choose your installation path, and then click OK if the directory needs to be created. Uh, and then it's going to ask you about creating shortcuts. The default options are fine with me. 
And after the installation process has finished, click Next. And now you're going to be asked to configure the secure connector. Uh, so you configure the secure connector using the configuration file we downloaded before. So click Next here, and then browse to the configuration file. So our configuration file is going to be in, uh, it's in Home, Administrator, Downloads, and it is this uh, configuration file here. And then click Next. And then these are the uh, options from the configuration. The only thing to really pay attention to here is that uh, the ports that they're using here, make sure these ports are, are unused and not being used by something else right now. Uh, and click Next. And if you're using a proxy, um, you need to configure the proxy here. Uh, I'm not using a proxy, so I'll just click Next here. And then it says the uh, installation has successfully completed, so we click Done. Uh, now we just need to start the secure connector and make sure that it can connect. So we're going to cd into user local IBM secure connector. And you want to run uh, run uh, client underscore osgi.sh and you want to pass uh, start to start the secure connector. Okay, so if the connector starts successfully and connects, uh, you'll see that the secure connector, the message is saying the secure connector started successfully. And if we um, go back to uh, Cast Iron Live here in our browser and look at secure connectors and uh, refresh the page, go back to development and back to system. We can now see if the secure connector started successfully that there's a there's uh, that the secure connector is running, and you'll see that in the dashboard here. Um, and at this point, we're now ready to start um, exposing the APIs, uh, the REST APIs that are on this machine uh, through the secure connector. But that we're going to save that for the next video. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next video.